Hey guys, thanks for clicking on the video. This is The Chew with Rue, where we highlight some awesome low-carb recipes for you and your family. My name's Steven Rue, and we are here to talk through today's recipe, which will include my famous cheese shells, you're gonna love these things, filled with beautiful gyro meat and a fresh tzatziki sauce. So check out our low-carb gyros. Each and every one of our episodes will not only feature a low-carb recipe, but one of my fantastic bobblehead collection, here to help choose today's, let's bring in my little girl. This is Chloe. Chloe, uh, what bobblehead do you want to include for the low carb gyro recipes? Rusty. Ah, uh, Rusty Coots. Get him out of the cabinet and let's get to cooking. This is Rusty Coots. He was once the first base coach for the Royals. Fantastic guy. My favorite thing about Rusty, not only does he talk, but he's got fuzzy hair. Let's get it going. This is low carb gyros with Rusty Coots. Let's go. All right, so we're going to get started with the low carb tzatziki recipe. Euros are better with tzatziki, folks. All you're going to need one medium cucumber. I like to use this little gizmo here. It's called a mandolin. Don't play it like a musical instrument. It hurts. I like to use that. Little salt and pepper at the end. Some fresh dill. As much as you want. Fresh, awesome garlic. Nice and fresh right here. I've got two cloves of that. And then of course you're going to need two cups of sour cream. Let's get it cooking. All right, let's get it going. Rusty's gonna have to help me out here. All right, where are you going, Rusty? Right there, give me a look. There we go. All right, so when I do my garlic, I don't know, I don't know, I've seen it a whole bunch of different ways. I actually cut my garlic the same way I cut my onions. All right, here we go. About four little strips there. And I go straight down, trying to leave out the back. And I give her a little cut right there. Makes these perfect little cubes. What do you think, Rusty? Oh, fire! Now you're cooking. That's right. Now you're cooking. Those of you that are big Royals fans will recognize Rusty as the first base coach during the championship years there in 15. 14, of course, and we just came in a little bit short of Madison Bumgarner and the stupid San Francisco Giants. They're not stupid. They're not all stupid, but Hunter Pence is. So. All right, now it's time for some basil, y'all. I love the smell. The smell of fresh basil. It's good stuff. Let's give it a rough chop. Nothing really that, I mean, basil, it's going to mix in with the sour cream here in a few minutes anyway. So really all you need to do, don't rough it up too much. Don't be rude to it. Um, if you mess it up a little bit too much, it can kind of get bruised a little bit. And I guess that's what it's called. Of course, I'm no chef. These are just my own little takes on stuff. And also, not, not everything we're going to do here, guys, on this channel. I want to make everything clear. If something I can buy at the store, if it's pre-made, and I can put it into one of my recipes, you're going to notice that with this recipe a little bit later. Why in the world? Why in the world would you do it fresh? If you can buy it at the store cheaper than you can make it yourself, I guess that's the American way these days, isn't it? Why would you do it yourself if you can get it cheaper at the store? Plus, you know, you're supporting the store. There you go. All right, basil's pretty well ready to go. We'll chop that up. So right here, we've got ourselves two cloves of garlic right here. We've got ourselves some basil ready to go. Rusty, how we looking, man? Checking in on the bobblehead. Wow, that's why you're the best. Hey. Time to turn our attention to this wonderful cucumber. Notice I've cut off the ends. I've got my mandolin here. I like to do mine on the finest cut I can. I don't know, it, a lot of the recipes will tell you to cube a cucumber. I think this does an awesome job. Notice it'll give me just a really, really fine chop like this. I love that texture inside the tzatziki sauce. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna run this across the mandolin. Again, cutting, cutting the ends off allows you to kind of get that angle. If you wanna protect your fingers with a glove or something like that, I saw Alton Brown use a little chainmail gloves. I love that. I'm not going to chop down enough to even worry about my fingers at this point. 
but I'm just going to keep this chopping. Everything I'm doing is going right there in the pot. If you don't have one of these little mandolins, my goodness, why don't you pick one up? They're super cheap. Um, you can find one at Walmart, the Targets. You can find it on the Amazons. Just a little mandolin. This little mandolin slicer, I believe, was a gift from my mama. So there you go. Just finish chopping up that cucumber, and you'll be ready to go. All right, guys. So you saw I used my mandolin. And I've got all my cucumber here, and you see, actually I just set this down for just a second, you see all this water that's coming out of this cucumber. That's the primary goal when you're making this. The first time I made this tzatziki stuff, I did not get out enough of the liquid, so I got myself one of these awesome little colanders, these little wire colanders, and I sort of just take out my aggressions on it. You kind of push down against the shield, and you push all of the moisture out. You're going to try to get as much as you can. Obviously, a little bit of moisture is going to be okay. It'll actually help to make the consistency correct in your tzatziki, but trust me, don't skip this step. Otherwise, you're going to end up with way too liquidy a tzatziki sauce, and uh, then you're never going to be able to spell tzatziki. Can you guys spell tzatziki? Cindy, can you spell tzatziki? No. All right, so we've got all our ingredients cut and ready to go, and we're going to assemble our tzatziki. We're going to start with our cucumber medley here. It's all cucumber. I said medley. I'm using all these musical terms today. I used... I use the mandolin, I got my medley. Now I'm gonna to add to that all my basil and my garlic. Remember, you had two cloves of garlic. I'd say, man, what is that, about a teaspoon and a half, a tablespoon, tablespoon, listen, however much dill you want, you add the dill you want, guys, it's fine. I like to put a little salt in right now before I add the sour cream. I feel like it uh, kind of dries out the cucumber a little bit. I like to mix those all together just a bit. Get your hands in there, get dirty. And then, of course, sour cream. Now this is a low carb edition of tzatziki. That's pretty, pretty awesome to make. We got one more ingredient I forgot to tell you at the beginning there, guys. You're gonna need a lemon. You're gonna need a lemon. I forgot to set that out earlier because it's my first show and I forgot. You are gonna need a juice of half a lemon. So we'll be adding that as well. And that's how we go so far. I like to give that a nice mix right now and get it mixed together and we'll add our lemon juice at the end. You're gonna notice this consistency is gonna to come together pretty nicely and you're gonna end up with this creamy, delicious sauce. Now the great thing about this stuff, if you're making a gyro, you can actually do this ahead of time if you got people coming over and to be honest, the flavor's better. Make this the day before, a couple days before and all this flavor kinda of gets together, I recommend if you make it fresh right before, I'd, I'd really give it at least an hour in the refrigerator, in the refrigerator, that was easy to say, the refrigerator, uh, for it to all come together. Now's the time, you're gonna add in some pepper, just a little bit to taste. I, I love black pepper, my wife does not agree on that, so I'll do a little less than I normally would. Again, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt because salt makes everything taste better. And then I'm gonna grab a lemon, a good medium lemon right there. Use the other half in a cup of tea here on this beautiful summer day. I like to cut it into a quarter and then of course give yourself the squeeze through the hand technique here because what that's going to do is allow you not to get any seeds. I just said that and then look what happened. A seed popped out. Not get any seeds into the sauce. You want to get those into your hand. Run those through your fingers just like that. Do that with both quarters and then you are ready to mix. Alright, we've added in the lemon juice, again I did that last, mixing in the pepper, that salt, that lemon juice, man does it smell, <laughs> does it smell really good, Chloe's sitting here with me, I get the smell of dill, I get the smell of lemon, just that little little bit of sour cream right there, to me this is the most delicious stuff on planet earth, that's one man's opinion, give it a little try, perfect tzatziki recipe. All right, guys, here at The Chew With Rue, we are all about those low-carb dishes, and this is a life changer for me. The low-carb tortilla shell featuring Chihuahua cheese. I don't know if you know this Chihuahua cheese stuff. It is fantastic. I discovered a few uh, months ago how to turn this into a taco shell, so we'll get that started. But first, another sip of my tea. I use the other half of the lemon. Ah, get yourself a cup of tea while you cook up the taco shells for your gyro. I recommend... Uh, red diamond tea, it's the only kind I like. All right, so basically our goal here is to create a taco shell or an outer layer. 
Um, for gyros, you're used to having like a pita bread, something like that. You're not going to miss it once we get going with this chihuahua. I discovered this uh, once upon a time. This is a melty cheese chihuahua. You can find it in a bag. You can find it in a round, as I understand. Uh, they don't have that at my particular grocery store. Let's get this going on medium-high heat. You're just going to take a little handful of the cheese, and you're going to put it in the middle of the pan. Trust me, this seems crazy. I think you could probably do this in a silk hat and do this in the oven if you want, if you don't have to deal with the flipping and stuff like that. I'll tell you, I really enjoy making these little guys. They take just a little bit of time. That first one you cook is going to take a little bit of time more than the rest, but you're basically just going to create a round, okay? Your goal is to make a little round taco shell. Hear that sizzle, it starts to get going. Now, when I first made these, um, I would flip them over, get them off, put them on a plate or something like that, and use a toothpick between the two sides to kind of make that taco uh, size. But I discovered this thing on a deep Amazon dive or walmart.com or target.com, I can't remember exactly where I got it. This is one of those holders for taco shells. So you would normally you know, make tacos on it. If you've ever had a party of folks making tacos, you throw those in there, it works pretty well. What I decided is if I use it the opposite way, so instead of using these divots to make a taco, I'm gonna make a shell by using the mounds as opposed to using the valleys, okay? I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second after we get this guy cooked up. This is a game changer, folks. These taco shells are absolutely incredible. I showed this to my father-in-law. I showed it to several of my friends and they keep messaging me how awesome these are. You can do this with a lot of different things. I'll be making them down the road. We'll be making my famous shrimp tacos with these shells. I've made a brisket, a um, pretty awesome uh, brisket taco as well. Anything you can think of, this little vehicle right here might be the best part of this episode. Using Chihuahua cheese just in a pan. Notice I didn't spray it or nothing. There's enough oil in this, in this cheese. It's all going to come out of it. And you're just going to wait for it to look a little golden brown. And really, as soon as you feel like you can flip it over, you're going to want to flip it over. Okay? Your goal is to get it nice and golden brown all the way around. I'm sure you're bored hearing me talk, but this is the Chihuahua cheese. We're using Supremo brand right here. It is family owned since 1964. Um, again, this first one's going to take a little bit longer than the ones to follow. So take a sip of that tea as you make yourself your Chihuahua taco shell. Oh my gosh, the smell. Every time I get to cooking these, Mason will call down or he'll come into the house or whatever if he's been outside playing and he'll be like, Dad, what does that smell? And now he just knows uh, that it is these taco shells. I will probably make, I probably make 10 of these a week for myself. Yesterday I made shrimp tacos uh, with an incredible slaw on top, some uh, avocado slices in there and a, a ranch mixed with a little uh, sriracha sauce. Yowza! Check out that recipe down the road. But oh my gosh, it's such good stuff. All right, so looks like we're like three minutes on the side, something like that. And then we take it, we just get it off and then flip it over. All right, so check that out. Oh, let's look at a replay of that. Just get it off and then flip it over. All right, so there it is. Look how golden brown and delicious that looks. Woo, baby. Seriously. Rusty. Oh man, I covered up Rusty. Rusty, what do you think of that one, buddy? Oh, ah, old player, now you're cooking. While that's finishing up, make certain that here with your, if you're going to use one of these, you're going to take it and you're going to set it on some paper towels. Um, I've got three paper towels. I've got the little short paper towels folded in, the, in the half. Just set it on top there because there's going to be a little bit of grease come off of this guy. I mean, we're talking low carb. Low carb, my goodness, guys. You know how many grams of carbs this has? Zero. Zero grams of carbs. And those of you that are trying to do a low carb or keto diet, this is a perfect thing. It's going to add crunch. I miss that crunch. That's something I miss uh, whenever I'm on a low carb diet. So this adds that crunch back, and you really do not miss. Do not miss the taco shell. In fact, I kind of prefer these. Now, notice I just set it over the top, just like that. Let's get in there. I don't know if you saw that. Probably pretty far away here as I'm filming for the first time. I'm just using that shell on top like that. I've made myself a taco shell. Let's make a few more. It's hard enough. We've got ourselves a nice little taco shell there. It's hard. It's crispy. Hear that? I always hear that on, on cooking shows where they, they hit that. I can hear it. I don't know if you can or not, but... Uh, I guess we'll see on the replay. All right, we got taco shell number two. Got a brand new view coming to you live from the Keurig. 
Um, <laughs> so this is it. You got the edges getting a little bit brown there. You can see a little close up view and just give it a flip just like that. Oh, that was magical. Ooh, I'm gonna cook up the rest of these and we'll be back in a second. All right guys, so I wanted to show you what to do if you didn't have one of these sweet little taco holders. So I've got one, my last shell here is about finished. Um, you see it's pretty brown there. On the outside, remember the browner gets the crispy, it's gonna get to a point. I wouldn't take it much past this. This is about as down, done as you're gonna want it to be. You're gonna let it sit on a little plate like this for just a moment. Give it just a moment to kind of stop sizzling because it's gonna be hot. And then all you're gonna need, and I show that to you, a little toothpick, okay? So you're gonna take that toothpick and all you're gonna do is if you can let it crisp up a little, see how it's crispy? Listen to that. You can fold it over, be careful, it's hot. And if you just give it just a littlest bit of, littlest bit of strength right there with that toothpick, run it through one side, and let it kind of stand up like a tent, and like you're just holding it up, you get the idea right there. Give it a little bit to cool down, and you're gonna have yourself the same kind of taco you would have, a little bit extra work, but it saves you from buying that little taco thing that I've got. All right, as I said before, if we don't have to make it, we're not gonna make it, so here's what we're gonna use for our gyro. This is uh, from the Sam's Club. I'm sure you can find something like this at Costco or any of your grocery stores. This is Kronos Authentic Gyro Slices. Any of these, look at the, the carb content. This particular one is only eight grams of carb per serving. You get three ounces, which is plenty to make yourself a pretty awesome one. Remember, when calculating uh, net carbs, you wanna take the total number of carbs, you wanna subtract away fiber, and you wanna wanna subtract away sugar alcohols, okay? So there is no fiber in this, but we're gonna get plenty of that with our cucumber and a little bit of that from our cheese and stuff like that. So we're gonna have but plenty to offset. This will be a pretty low carb meal. Not the lowest one we're going to do on here in this channel, but a really good low carb meal. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this stuff up in the pan and it's going to be ready to go. I'm going to use the same pan I just made all those shells in. We're going to heat it up till it's heated through and we're going to be ready to assemble some euros. Let's do it. All right, so here we go. The moment we've all been waiting for. I heated up that gyro meat. I put it inside our cheese shell right there. This thing is crispy and the kids are bugging me. They're ready for some food. I've got my tzatziki sauce that we made a moment ago. We're gonna put some of that right on the gyro meat. I don't scamp on the tzatziki. I'm gonna put that right on there. And then on top of that, we're gonna put a little bit of crumbled feta cheese. Feta cheese basically is zero carb. It has one gram of carb, but it almost has one gram of fiber. So you end up canceling all that out. You can feel free to put whatever you want on this. Some people like to have some like really finely cut onions. Oh my gosh, my mouth is watering, it smells so good. Finally cut onions on top of there, maybe a little bit of a uh, little bit of tomato if you like to add a little bit more garbage. I put a little bit of black pepper right on top just to finish it off. Looks pretty cool. And there you go, a finished gyro. All right, thanks for cooking with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this low carb gyro recipe with our homemade tzatziki sauce, our homemade shells made of chihuahua cheese. Rusty, do we get your seal of approval here today, my man? That's what I'm talking about. Let's give it a bite. Mmm. Make sure you all subscribe. If you like this content, you're gonna get more of these going. Oh my gosh, they're so good. See you guys next time. Bye. It's the So good. Why is this so good? Because this is probably the best gyro you've made. It's really good. It's really good. You took a, put a lot of time into it. Well, yeah, I had to make a video. Bye, guys. It's the